All right, so this is the last problem, problem five of the tear-off. Problem five reads, let f of x be 4x to the fifth minus 5x to the fourth. And given that, we need to determine the following for f. We first have to determine the x-intercepts. Then we need to show the signs of f prime and f double prime on the number lines. So pretty much the first and second derivative test. Pick our test points and see if it's positive or negative. So for the first derivative uh, test, we pick our test points. Well, first we get our critical numbers. Then we get the test points, and we plug the test points into the first derivative and see if it's plus or minus. If it's plus or minus, it's increasing or decreasing. So if it's plus, it's increasing. If it's minus, it's decreasing. For the second derivative test, take the second derivative, get our critical numbers, and we also do some test points. And if it's, and if it's a positive number, it's concave up. If it's a negative number, it's concave down. So we'll do those signs. Then C says find the local maximum at x, and then the local maximum value, the local minimum at x, and its local um, minimum value. Then we got to find the inflection points. So the inflection points is taking the second derivative, doing using the second derivative test, getting the critical numbers, and finding and using test points again. And once we find where it's uh, concave down, concave up. So if it goes from if it goes from concave down to concave up then at that x value, it's, uh, there's an inflection point. Uh, also, you can have concave up to concave down, and then at that x value, it, there's an inflection point. So, let's go ahead and do that, and also B, we'll sketch it. So we'll sketch the graph once we have all this information. So, let's start with A then. Alright, so first we need to find little a x-intercepts. Alright, so to find x-intercepts, we need to make this equation equal to zero and solve for x. So, 4x to the fifth minus 5x to the fourth equal to zero. Alright, in order to solve this, we need to factor out the common factor, that's x to the fourth. So, factor out x to the fourth, you're left with 4x minus 5. That's equal to zero. So now, Something times something equals zero implies that this equals zero or this equals zero. So we have x equals zero, and we have 4x minus 5 equals zero. And you have 4x equals 5. Add 5 to both sides. Now we divide by 4 to both sides to get x equals 5 fourths. All right. So those are two. Or those those x values are are where the intercepts happen. So here we have. Um, 0 and 5 comma 4. Alright, so those are our x-intercepts. Now let's do b. So, like I was saying with b, let's go over here. we want to find the signs of f prime and f double prime on a number line. So first we need to do the first derivative test and see what see the signs for, for the first derivative, and then take the second derivative, do the second derivative test and see the signs for the second derivative. Alright, so the first derivative, so we have f, so now we have f prime. So f prime is, using the power rule, we have 20x, 20x to the fourth, and then here we have, again using the power rule, we have 20x to the third. Alright, so the first root test, uh, we have to make this equal to zero and find possible critical numbers. So we make this equal to zero, first of all we can factor a 20x cubed. So factor out 20x cubed, we're left with x minus 1. Now we'll make that equal to 0. So if we make this equal to 0, then this is equal to 0, or this is equal to 0. So therefore, x is equal to 0. This x is equal to 0 is the 20x cubed equals 0, divide both sides by 20, you get 0, and therefore x equals 0. Now x minus 1 equals 0 means that x is equal to 1. So these are our possible critical numbers. To see if there are actual critical numbers, we'll see if they're defined in the original. So if f of 0, f of 0 is defined, that's 0. And f of 1 is defined, that's 4 minus 5, that's negative 1. So these are our actual critical numbers. So now we have the critical numbers. Let's plot our number line here. So this is for f prime. All right, so now we plug in 0 and 1. And now we pick test points. So I'll pick negative 1 here, I'll 
pick one half here, and I'll pick two here. Now what we're doing is we're looking for the signs. So we have to plug in each test point into the first derivative and see if it's plus or minus. So f prime of negative 1. All right, what's f prime of negative 1? Come here. Negative 1 minus 1, that's negative 2. Negative 1 to an odd power, that's negative. So we have negative times negative is positive. So there's a positive number. Positive number, that means this is increasing. Okay. F prime of 1 half. So f prime of 1 half. 1 half minus 1 is a negative 1 half. And this is positive. 1 half cubed is positive. Times a positive number is positive. So positive times negative is negative. That's a negative number. So it's decreasing. So this is positive. This is negative. And now we have f prime of our last test point, 2. Okay, so plug 2 into the first derivative. 2 minus 1, that's a positive 1. And this is positive. 2 cubed positive times 20 is positive. So positive times positive is positive. So it's a positive number. So this is positive, therefore it's increasing. So these are the signs. From negative infinity to 0, it's positive. From 0 to 1, it's negative. And then from 1 to infinity, it's positive. That's for f prime. Those are the signs for f prime. Now we want to do a second derivative test because we need to do the signs for the second derivative, f double prime. So, f double prime of x is equal to, well we have this derivative here, 4 times 20, that's 80, x cubed, um, 3 times 20, I'm using the power rule, Min that's minus 60, x squared. Okay. So the second derivative test, we got to make the second derivative equal to zero as well. So set this equal to zero. I can go ahead and factor out a 20, and I can factor out an x squared. So I'm left with um, 4x and here minus 3. And I make that equal to zero. Okay, so we have this times this equals zero, then this is equal to zero, or this is equal to zero. Therefore, we have x equals 0. And here we get that 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. Therefore, we have that 4x equals 3. And then divide both sides by 4. We get that x equals 3 fourths. All right, so that's what we have right now. Let's see if I do this right. 20 times 3, 60. Yeah. Okay, now we have that, let's go ahead and look at what happens with the signs. Okay, so we have 0 and 3 fourths, so here is 0, and here, let's say here's 3 fourths. So those are our critical numbers for the second derivative. We have pick test points, so I'll pick negative 1, I'll pick uh, 1 fourth here. And I'll pick uh, one here. Now I want to see the signs. So what we have to do is go ahead and plug it into the second derivative. So f double prime of negative one. So come here. Negative one squared is positive, so that's a positive number here. Here we get negative four minus three. That's a negative. So it's a negative times a positive is a negative. So that's a negative number. So if it's a negative number. That means this is concave down. So negative. Alright, one fourth. So f double prime of one fourth. Okay, go to come over here, one fourth. Four times one fourth is one. One minus three is negative. And then we have one fourth here is positive. So positive times negative, another negative number. So here we have negative again. And this is concave down. Okay, now um, f double prime at. 1, you see the sign here. Plug in 1, you get 4 minus 3, that's positive, and that's positive, so positive times positive is positive. So that's a positive number. Okay, so this is positive. That means this interval, it's concave up. Okay, so those are the signs. And this is, this is f prime, this is f double prime. Okay, so now that we have that, we answered 
A and B, but we also answered C, D, and E. Since we, since we want the local maximum at X, okay, what's the local max? If it goes from increasing to decreasing, that means there's a maximum here at X equals zero, and if it goes from decreasing to increasing, that means there is a local min here at X equals one. So, we already found the local max, that's at X equals zero, and we found the local min, that's at X equals one. Now we need to find the Y values for these. Well, that's simple. Just plug in zero into the um, original equation. So if you plug zero into the original equation, you'll get the, the, ma uh, the maximum value. Plug zero in here, you get zero minus zero, that's zero. So that's that. So let's write it over here somewhere. I need some space for the graph. So I'll leave that space for part B. Um, so this is C. C, we know that x equals zero. So at x equals zero, f of zero is zero. Now for part B, local min is at x equals one. That's right here. So at x equals one, f of one is, plug it in here. So we get four, one to the fifth is one, one to the fourth is one. So four minus five is negative one. So that's negative one. So the local min value is negative one. Now I said we also answered E, inflection point. If you recall, the inflection point is when it goes from concave uh, down to concave up, or concave up to concave down. So when it searches concavity, you have an, an inflection point. So the second derivative tells us that. Here we have concave down, and then concave down. So zero is not an inflection point. However, here you have concave down to concave up. Therefore, at three-fourths, there's an inflection point. So that was answered right there. So three-fourths. That is our inflection point. All right, so we answered A, B, C, D, and E. Now we want to sketch the graph of this equation using all this information. Okay, so there's a graph. This is our y-axis, x-axis. Um, we have intercepts at 0, 0, 0. And we have another intercept at... Uh, five fourths, which is one and one and a quarter. So I'll call this one here, and I'll call this five fourths, right there. Okay, so at five fourths, there's an intercept. So it intercepts right here as well. It's an x-intercept there. Okay, what else do we know? Um, local max at x equals zero, and it's zero. So that means there's some max right there. And there's a minimum at x equals 1, it's negative 1. So, let's call this negative 1. And at 1, it's negative 1. So at x equals 1, there's a point here, and that's a minimum. So, it does something like this. What else do we know? We know an inflection point happens at x equals 3 fourths. So 3 fourths is roughly here. And three-fourths, they give it to us, that's negative 0 0.6. So negative 0 0.6 is roughly here. So that point is roughly here. So here's the inflection point. Okay, so it goes from concave down to concave up. So it must do something like this. Here's the inflection. Here it goes to concave up and it passes to 5 forward, and then it continues upward, and then here's downward. So that is the graph, yeah, all the information was used, and this information was used, 3 fourths and negative 0 0.6, so there's the inflection point, and that is a rough sketch of, and this is f of x, so this is the graph of f of x. So, quickly recall, or let me go over this. Um, X-intercepts make the equation equal to zero, solve for X, we've done this before. Show the signs. So to show the signs of F prime and F double prime, we need to use the first derivative test for, for F prime, and the second derivative test for F double prime. So find the critical numbers, use test points, 
grab those test points, plug them in either to the first derivative if you're doing, if you're doing the first derivative test, or the second derivative if you're doing the second derivative test, and see if it's positive or negative. So that will tell you positive or negative. For the first derivative, it tells you it's increasing and decreasing. For the second derivative, it tells you the concavity. Once you have that done, all of this flows right from this right here. Once I did this and this, once I drew those out, all of this just came from that. So our maximum is at x equals 0. You get that from the first derivative test, because at x equals 0, it goes from increasing to decreasing. And in, order for, in order for it to go from increasing to decreasing, that means there's a max point right there. So that happens at x equals 0. Similarly, right here at x equals 1, it goes from decreasing to increasing. So there is a minimum right there. That's how we got our 0 and 1. 0 and 1. To find the actual values, once you have the 0 and 1, just plug them right into the original, and you'll get your values, your y values. So that's 0, negative 1. Now for the inflection point, we use a second derivative test. And we have to recall that for an inflection point, it must go from, at that x value, it must go from a concave down to concave up, or concave up to concave down. So the concavity must switch. And if you look at here, from negative 3 to 0, it's concave down. And from 0 to 3 fourths, it's concave down. So nothing happened at 0. No concavity switched. It stayed concave down. However, at, three, at x equals 3 fourths, it went from concave down to concave up. So at x equals 3 fourths is our inflection. So that's there. So with that, all this came. Once, all, once we had all of this, we can easily graph this because we know uh, maximum at x equals 0. So here's our maximum at x equals 0. There's a minimum at x equals 1. That's a 1 here. That's there, because that's negative 1. We obtained that was negative 1. Um, we have the inflection point at 3 fourths. That's where it switches from concavity down to concavity up. And it gave us the negative 0 0.6. So that's roughly about there. And finally, we know the intercepts, 0 and 5, 4. So it intercepts here, intercepts here. And it goes from um, increasing, decreasing, and increasing. And that's that.